know, officially, Agatha Raisin P.I. Champagne, everyone, it's launch time. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Olivia Witherspoon is dead. The key to the mystery is in that house. Ivy Hall, unexplained paranormal activity on grand scale. What's next? Vampires, zombies, little green men in flying saucers. Stay close. Perfectly safe with me. Hello, welcome to Unrestricted View Horror Film Festival and here for uh, today's episode of Meet the Director, we've got a producer and that is uh, Chris Niles. Hi Chris, how are you doing? Hello, very well thanks James. Yeah, good to be here. Oh, so it's good to have you. So how's lockdown been for you? Has that been... um, it's, been, it's been interesting, I'll give you that. I mean, it's, uh, I think I'm pretty much the same with everyone now, just sort of fed up to the back teeth of, of being inside and not really knowing what's supposed to be doing and going on but as with everyone else trying to make the best of it and I'll tell you what one good thing is from sort of donning my producer hat it's been kind of liberating and humbling to see how creative people are being when creating things um particularly you know film obviously we've seen some crazy stuff come out with things like host coming out there's just you know all these ideas that are born out of lockdown and probably slash boredom as well um so at least we've had new content to consume you know <laughs> just yeah. to kind of keep yeah. us there so uh, so yeah yeah I mean stick to the back teeth of it but trying to make the best of it as is everyone I think yeah cool. well I mean you've got a film in this festival Black Mass directed by Scott Lias and um, how did this come about tell us uh, the journey of Black Mass so um, Black Mass has been well I mean we, we shot it unbelievably how quickly time goes I think about sort of 16 to 18 months ago now and as with so many projects it came out of um again almost boredom and waiting around so scott and i uh, have worked together on on sort of a few projects and we've had a feature in the wings um for again which seems like i think it's been in the in the process for about sort of four years really and we'd made a short film um just before something called the echoes of the past which i think actually played last year at i'm restricted view i think or maybe yes. the year before yeah. So uh, continuing a lovely trend. Um, and um, as with producing a feature, you know, these things, when you're trying to, trying to raise money, it takes, you know, infinitely longer and is infinitely harder and more complicated than you ever always think it is. So we were kind of found ourselves, um, Scott and I, at a, a bit of an impasse, really, where it had been a while since we'd made something. Um, and we were sort of no closer really to, to sort of getting any funding across for the features. So we thought, well, you know, sod it. Should we just make something else? And, um, you know, Scott had an idea. He had the idea for Black Mass in his head. Um, it was always sort of something uh, that he wanted to make. I mean, it, as you guys might know, it's a film that's sort of very much rooted in, in uh, Scott's own sort of personal battles with depression. So it's always been a piece that he's wanted to make, he's wanted to get out really. Um, and because we were kind of at uh, that sort of juncture where it's like, we know we had some time before um, we sort of went into full production on the feature. So we thought sort of we'll make it. Um, so he went away and wrote it in record time, I must say. Um, and yeah, we just kind of got on and made it. And as is with all these things, you know, the unexpected films that you never think you'll make or, or certainly still were never on your sort of roadmap of things to make often turn out to be your most fulfilling. And, and that's definitely the case yeah. um, with Black Mass. You know, we, we had, I mean, whenever I've made a short, um, it's, it's always, again, humbling to kind of just work with so many amazing people. And, you know, these are, these are people that, for me, just kind of don't get the recognition they deserve, you know, from actors to, to crew, you know, the flexibility and you know, the, the work ethic of these guys is incredible to me. And that's definitely what we saw um, when we sort of put Black Mass together, um, when we shot it, like I said, 18 months or so ago. Um, so it was, yeah, it was such a, well, I say, a fun project to do. I mean, it was, I mean, the subject matter is pretty grim and a bit, uh, a bit dark, but, um, but yeah, wonderful team, brilliant to work with people again. You know, we're, uh, when Scott and I make stuff, we're always keen to bring the same people back on because, like I said, we're so lucky to work with so many great people. And, um, yeah, so Black Mass was born, really. Fabulous. And so, yeah, um, 
Tell me if I've got this right. Is the feature going to be called Walking Against the Rain? Yes. So the same feature um, finally got funding. Um, yeah. So um, we were actually due to shoot that in June. Um, right. So everything was done. Everything was fixed. Um, and then obviously lockdown happened. So we had to kill that. Um, so that was then moved. And then we were hoping, just really, really trying to get back in um, at the end of August to try and get in and do it. But because uh, some of our cast members were coming in from overseas, just yeah. again, just didn't prove feasible. And, you know, all the boring stuff that we can really kind of get sorted out in time and things like insurance and things like that, you know, we just seemed, I think we probably missed the cusp by sort of a couple of weeks really, which was, which was kind of infuriating. Um, but the good news is, is that we're still, we're now rebooked to shoot that uh, at the end of April, um, going into early May. So we haven't lost anything, thankfully. Um, luckily, I mean, again, cast and crew have been phenomenal in terms of having us mess them around with kind of changing dates here, there and everywhere and just trying to kind of get everything packed in. So yes, as it stands, we've got, I think pretty much bar a few casualties, the same, um, exactly the same group of people that were booked to go in June in April next year. So really thankful for those guys for, you know, like I said, just uh, being super flexible and yeah, here's hoping finally touch wood that we can actually kind of get out in the sticks uh, with sort of, it's all being filmed up in the Lake district um, okay. this time. So yeah, outside in the sticks, in the cold, in the dark, but yeah, should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to getting out there. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's a little bit warmer in April, but yes. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it's up North though, James, <laughs> you know, that's just cold shave off all a few the time. <laughs> uh, well, I'm guessing, I mean, we're used to London weather, aren't we? Yeah. So I always feel like we have to shave 10 degrees off wherever we go, but, uh, no, but yeah. That's, I think, I think that's true. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic that, it, that it's going to go. And congratulations for raising the money. I mean, thank uh, you. We all know how difficult that is to get the funds together for a feature. It's, it's no yeah, use. It's, it's been a slog. Yeah. It's been a slog. But again, yeah. thanks to, there's been a lot of people that have helped us to get this far. And um, as with any independent film, it's always a, a massive community effort, yeah. um, as you well know, I think as well. So yeah, it's great to get there. And we hope we do everyone proud with it. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see it in our festival when it's ready. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, there's another one I want to ask you about because, um, I mean, I, I must admit, I haven't seen Early Bird, but that was, you started with a feature, didn't you? So um, Yeah, yeah. For my sins, um, I, yeah, I decided the first film I was going to produce was to be a feature rather than, you know, <laughs> kind of tread carefully and do a couple <laughs> of shorts or something. Um, but, um, yeah, Early Bird, uh, again, uh, it feels like I did it a couple of years ago, but I think it was... 2014 so six maybe even seven years ago I think it yeah. was now um but yeah Baptism of Fire um as is always like an early <laughs> an early production but again um I met the director the writer director it was a chap called uh, Andrew Flynn who is a, a phenomenal writer and, a, and a, a gifted director um he's well, basically that that film was sort of based on his experience as a, a Welshman moving to London, you know, from the, from the hallowed valleys to, to the big city. Um, he, he kind of hopped around, you know, sofa surfed, tried to just sort of live wherever he could. And um, he was completely blown away by the idea of flat sharing, but not just the idea of sort of sharing a flat with someone you don't know the whole concept of how you basically kind of go, have one interview with a group of housemates and then, um, you know, decide that you're going to go and live with them without knowing them. I mean, as you know, you don't know anyone, you know, even if you've known them for years and years until you actually kind of live with them. So how on earth could that possibly work with a group of strangers? So um, yeah, he wrote a really interesting piece. It's such a, I mean, again, not a particularly fun film, um, but loved making it and tonally and we, we completely fluked out with the timings of it because you know, it's a, it's a story of what's the worst that can happen when you move into a flat share, you know, it, it, it's sort of the fun is in that kind of aspect of it. Um, and um, it just kind of hit at the right time because um, Sadiq Khan, it's the, the film shot in Tooting and Sadiq Khan uh, was actually mayor at the time and he was on a massive push um, to kind of fire in more regulations around flat sharing. Um, so we kind of hit right at the time where yeah. that was a real talking point and we got some kind of decent... Um, uh, some decent sort of coverage off the back of that and uh, yeah it was again total community feel I mean we shot it in Tooting tried to rope in as many local businesses and local people and just kind of created a real kind of almost community spirited film and um, yeah used a lot of local businesses for locations and things like that and everyone kind of got involved and 
in terms of like uh, a, a, a first project in film, it, I loved it, you know, and this is where, this is where these things kind of happen, isn't it? You know, you kind of go there, you spend two, three weeks filming under immense pressure with zero money, trying to pray, please, please a load of people. You finish it. You're never going to make a film ever again because it's the worst experience of your life. And then a week later it's like, Oh God, I need to make another one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of, it, it sort of, yeah, really led me to sort of fall in love with, with the production side of film, I guess is probably the best way of saying it. I mean, I've always loved film, you know, horror films particularly yeah. has always been a passion of mine, but never really kind of considered working in them until Andrew gave me the opportunity to work with him on that. And yeah, here we are today, six yeah. years down the line, seven years down the line, far poorer and uh, yeah, far greyer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wouldn't so have it any other way. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But, uh, I mean, speaking of your love for horror, I mean, every, everyone, you know, knows you're famously a, a horror fanatic. In fact, you, you, you started and run the London Horror Society. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. To, how did that come about? I mean, was it just you just through that, that sort of dedication to horror films? Yeah, well, I would say dedication to horror film is one thing. I think it was more actually through, I had zero choice. I've always loved horror films. Um, I'm in no way an expert. I mean, I'll tell you what, one thing is you think you know horror films and then you actually meet the, you know, the members of the London horror community. And my goodness me, there's some incredibly knowledgeable people about that that put me to shame. Um, I, I, but I, I, yeah, I was on one panel with them. Yes. And uh, I just, yeah, was, right. <laughs> that's it. Color, I'd never watched a horror film. It was just, I know, I know <laughs> I've had that so many times. And, and then the, yeah, uh, one of the downsides, I mean, I love running the horror society. I mean, it's amazing, but goodness me, the expectations when people ask you questions and expect you to know the answers and you don't, that's quickly <laughs> put you in your place. Um, but yeah, I, I started that um, basically because none of my friends like horror movies and I did and I had zero place to sort of go and watch them because I mean you know admittedly I didn't really like watching them on my own because they're scary um so I kind of just wanted to find like a almost like a group of um like-minded people to to watch films with and this was this was probably seven seven eight years ago and, you know, things like Facebook groups weren't really a thing there. They weren't sort of like the communities that there are now um, that are brilliant in terms of bringing people together to watch and appreciate horror. Um, so I thought, so I'll start my own one. Um, and it kind of quickly brought me into uh, the London horror community, like I said, or the British or the UK horror community. And I was just overawed and blown away about how brilliant everyone is. You know, how, like I said, how knowledgeable people are, first of all, but how passionate people are about it as well. And, and supportive, just, I've always found. So I really, exactly, they really support each other. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. And just fell in love with it, really. And when, I mean, what's so brilliant about being around passionate and supportive people is that they make you want to be more passionate and more supportive. And I basically saw um, how much effort and how much time and how much love people were putting into creating stuff. And it kind of just got me on the path to thinking, you know, I want to help in any way I can to do this. And, you know, I'm not a writer. I'm not a director. I'm, you know, not in any way near creative enough to ever sort of think about doing makeup or special effects or anything like that. So I thought, stop it. What can I do? And I just wanted to try and use any kind of skill I had, which is, I don't know, anything I can do and still is to this day. It's like wherever I can kind of plug in, I'd love to. And yeah, I just wanted to make a sort of a push to try and help as many people create things, you know, just it be it films, which is certainly where it sort of started out at, but, you know, doing, you know, got me involved and in, in sort of seeing what people like the London Horror Festival do, you know, in terms of bringing stuff to the theatre, you know, yes. horror theatre was something I'd never even thought about. And then suddenly you see these people putting on, and I tell you what, it's still, again, it's been going a few years and I've seen a, a good few things go on down at, at there, but um, some of the stuff that people bring to stage, again, with zero money and they're getting paid nothing to do it just through passion blows my mind. I mean, there's such great creative people um, making things. I just wanted to be a part of that. I just wanted to help. And I think now the Horror Society now, we're, we're going through a kind of a shift in terms of, of what we're looking to do to help people and making it such much more of a focused offering. Um, so yeah, over the coming few months, um, we're going to be making a much more kind of zeroed in 
focus on on making horror better for everyone or you know pe- having making it easier for people to not only create stuff but you know consume it and just have fun with it really because i think people people deserve it you know and there's there's an audience there and you know anything we can do to make people's lives easier we're we're there for you know particularly now in when we're in a climate where people that operate in creative arts are being you know suggested by the very people that govern this country that you know what they do isn't good enough and they can should consider doing another career is just the biggest fuck you to mm. so many people in this country and I, I don't want people to stand for it and i don't want people right. to sort of listen for it and i just want people to feel empowered to do what they love and what they're good at you know this is we're not talking about amateurs here we're talking about you know amateurs that aren't good at what they do we're talking about people that are paid hardly anything and are phenomenal absolutely phenomenal i mean i i there's there is no way near the gap in quality that the budgets of big studio films and independent films or big studio theater productions or you know indie productions there's no gap in quality that the millions of dollars or millions of pounds would suggest and i just want to try and do anything that we can as a group to 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 sort of shrink that gap and get people that maybe haven't considered independent theater or cinema before you know they might love film but maybe they haven't considered the independent stuff because the coverage isn't there you know it's not their fault and i just want to try and make that easier for people to consume that so yeah that's a long-winded answer to what the horror society does but yeah we're just we're just here to help in any way we can really and if someone wants to 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 join and become part of the society how do they do that um, well, if they just head to uh, our website, which is londonhorrorsociety.co.uk, um, they can join for free, um, which is, uh, yeah, great. We're more the merrier. Um, yeah, it's a pretty easy sign-up process, and we're, we're happy to have people that are just fans. I mean, that's amazing to have a group of people together. And we buzz off more people we have, or if um, if they're professionals too, I mean, we can hopefully help kind of link people up and, and get new projects yeah. started as well. That's something we're really passionate about too. So. Yeah, anything we can do, like I said, I mean, we're always keen for, for feedback as well is, is one thing, you know, if people have suggestions of what we could do to help, I'm all ears. I mean, we'll, we'll make anything happen just to kind of, uh, yeah, make people's lives a bit bit better. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm greedy. It means more content for me to look at and watch and play with. So yeah, all the better. Fantastic. That's great. Um, thanks for chatting today. I'm going to finish on an, an impossible question. Okay, um, fantastic. Here we go. What's your favorite horror film? Oh, I knew it was going to be that one. And I can't, I can't give you an answer because it changes every week. So yeah, um, possible, isn't it? His, his, historically, I have always said um, either Halloween, the original yeah. Halloween or The Fog, um, just simply because they're the first couple I watched, um, you know, found them on my dad's, you know, on kind of scratchy VHS copies that dad had hidden behind the video because I wasn't supposed to watch them. But I found them and I watched them and I was terrified. Um, but you know that's how it works isn't it yeah. that's how you kind of get into these things um, honorable mention as well again for something that I shouldn't have watched and I was far too young but now it's kind of come to the fore again and I love it so much is Ghost Watch uh, oh, the yes. original kind of BBC yeah. again from Halloween oh love it you know it's, it holds such a kind of special place in my heart so I know you wanted one I've given you three there so yeah they're, they're the ones that keep flittering around in my head and whenever I'm asked that question is always one of those three so yes. I'll go with those I know it's a, I love the response the response is always the same oh god not that question <laughs> <laughs> but uh thanks Chris thanks, thanks Chris Niles um, producer of Black Mass which is playing on Tuesday the 27th of October as part of a group of short films called Little Terrors 2 thank you Chris take care and hopefully we can see you in the flesh soon and have a bit. No problem. Thank you. And I can't wait for the festival. I cannot wait, honestly. I can't suggest enough how brilliant the Unrestricted um, View Horror Festival is. And please do attend. Cheers. All right, buddy. You take care. <laughs> Cheers, Ed. All right. Bye. Bye.